The fourth Hellraiser film, Hellraiser Bloodline, or Hellraiser in Space, is an admirable attempt to wrap up the franchise while also giving details into the backstory of the puzzle box. It feels more like a Hellraiser movie than Part 3 did, but it's way too ambitious for its budget, and the studio tampering makes things rather disjointed. As you may or may not know, the film had a truly troubled production history. See that? There's no such person as Alan Smithy. That's the pseudonym that directors were allowed to put on a film if they didn't want their own name attached to it. The film's original director was special effects guru Kevin Yeager, but the studio wrestled the film away from him to make changes and even brought in a new director, Joe Chappelle, to reshoot many of the scenes. So what we end up with is a mix of several different perspectives as to what direction this film needed to go in, and as a result it's clunky and, well, just a big mess. The main thrust of the story and the origin of the Bloodline subtitle is about the toy maker who first created the puzzle box. His descendants are shown through time to also be influenced by the puzzle box, and since they had the knowledge to invent it, they also had the knowledge to construct something to defeat it. Unfortunately, the focus of the film is not on Pinhead and the Cenobites. It's some demon chick named Angelique who was summoned up from the very first time the puzzle box was opened. Yet somehow she knows Pinhead, but she's been gone 200 years, and he didn't start to exist till World War I, and oh great, I've gone cross-eyed. So she starts asking me all kinds of weird questions. Like what? Wait, I'm sorry, does that say condition yawning? That's not a word! How did two directors and a studio somehow so obsessed with making this movie the best it could be leave that in the movie? Hellraiser was the first horror franchise to jump into space, an idea that I don't really mind. By jumping way into the future, you can still effectively end your series without ending the franchise. The story can have a definitive ending, as it does here, but you can still have plenty of room to go back and tell untold stories that happened before this quote-unquote future. It's genius, actually. Unfortunately, what we get in 5 through 8 is just not good. Stay tuned and you'll find out what I'm talking about. I'm Chuck Dowling, and I'm attempting to watch and review 31 horror movies this October.